That's very this, cheap. no. I won't. I won't help someone move. Period. Do you know who the only people? No. You know my threshold for helping someone move so you're is forty two. No, but no. You know what my like, threshold? Why would you help someone, you someone move? Someone move is Becky moving next door to me. That is. I unpacked yeah. Becky's house. That's an but extra you, move. You still didn't I help did. her move. You just I helped she her. She did. He helped me. That's he helped her receive move. my items. He helped I receive my items. Received your items. I directed them around the house. Yeah. I, you... I I made sure that the the first time, not the second time she moved next. I know, but that's one whole extra move I did in my life. Right. Becky's still in her 30s, shy. Maybe people in their 30s help people move. If you're I don't. Less I'm not helping than people Becky, move. Never. I've never helped anyone move. <laughs> I my, remember me and Allie helping you move. My point. Yeah, I had the flu. That was very. My, my point is, is that if you are less important than Becky to me, not helping you move. Yeah. Um, Which I think wouldn't insult most people. Welcome to a full energy episode of the Friday Night Movie Podcast. Because we're all back together, I got to start by thanking Lily and Becky for taking on, at the last minute, taking on the reins of the last episode and doing such a good job. I laugh. I laughed so hard <laughs> when there are episodes that you both do where I am not in them. Because I enjoy the jokes. It's only happened made. twice. <laughs> what? Should we do it more often? It's only happened twice. Do it more often. I mean, if in I could find you guys to do it for sure. <laughs> it has I happened it's twice. It's such a different vibe when you're not there. It's, Lily and I are just let loose. It's it's yeah. great. It's so funny. And as much as you're funny making fun of me when I'm here. Ugh, it's the best when you're not here. Yeah, it's, 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 I did. I did miss your buttery voice. It's good to have it back. Welcome back. My it my is. voice is back. I have been, yeah. I you know, every once in a while something beats one of us. It's rare, and, it's, and rare, it's a surprise right? what it is. But apparently, flu A. It's apparently it's flu A. Flu A. You know, people talk about COVID. COVID's terrible, but before there was COVID, there before was people were getting flu. COVID shots, they were getting flu shots for a reason. And, and you know, and when you get the flu, it's assumed you'll be sick for 10 days 10 days you know? yeah that's yeah. what they say. it's like it's a, like 10 a day long recovery and well past event. your contagiousness so i was just mm-hmm. super tired yeah. but i'm back and we we've got this is going to be a fun episode because we're going to de- dive into a movie that was just released on digital we're going to talk about clerks three um but i think what's great about talking about clerks three is that i feel like it's going to bring up so much stuff because of the history of of how that movie fits into Kevin Smith and and where Kevin Smith fits into our movie watching history. So that's exciting. But before we do that, public service announcement for everyone. Uh the bet, you know, one of the best movies I've seen all year. And we've talked about nonstop and we've interviewed the people who made it, but it was not I, available. I've I've just like been WhatsApping people the link. Like Me all too. morning. Yeah. I'm just sending people the link. We're like a, a, a like a guerrilla marketing campaign for them. <laughs> exactly. Moshari. It's a short, it's 20 something minutes. 22 from minutes. Nuhash Humayun and his amazing team. Um and the, who came on our show uh, um after South by Southwest. This movie not only did it win at South by Southwest, but it has won nonstop all around the world at Oscar it, qualifying it, festivals. 20 plus film festivals it's gotten into. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and they just they keep winning awards. They, I think they're revolutionary filmmakers and it is a great Halloween scare. You will jump as I have video footage and we have video footage on the Friday Night Movie website. We should re-release that. That's true. In Yeah, in honor of it being available okay. publicly. We'll, we'll, we'll re-release that because... This it, is it, a, what it, now that like when people saw it then they couldn't see the movie and now right, they can so i feel like it's like and it's free a, it's on vimeo amazing you gotta watch it not so venmo the, not venmo not, venmo. not, not available on venmo <laughs> not venmo lily has a i, I made that mistake once <laughs> lily lily Did we tell has that story on the pod yet i, I don't lily think so was like, 
Lily was getting so frustrated with me. She's like, why won't my Venmo work? I can't no, I was like, I can't. Someone to. is asking me for my handle and I don't know my Venmo handle and I can't find it. And I'm like showing so Becky my phone. Mad. And I'm getting so frustrated. I was like, I don't see my handle anywhere. Oh my God. And Becky's looking at my phone and she goes, well, that's not Venmo. And I was like, Becky, of course it's Venmo. She's like, no, you don't see your handle, Lil, because that's the wrong app. That's Vimeo. <laughs> I'm trying to it's like, do you want to watch content? some auteur films or password protected also film festival makes movies? makes sense now while Lily's always getting so mad at us for not Venmoing her back because it wasn't showing up in her Vimeo yeah. app. L- oh, Lily money. opened her Venmo app and she's like, oh, I have all this money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, I had no idea it was there. Amazing. Uh, I, I want to admit something to Lily. Yeah. I've been, I've been, I've been watching you squirm and paddle with this having happened to you. And I have more you than do? Ten times in my life opened up Vimeo and ah! tried to send people money with it because oh. these are really similar. They, they are, right? I took screenshots of them for like a week with showing everybody. Which app is that? Just guess. They're a little bit too similar. How has no one talked about this before? Well, I mean, one a is a video app that. and one is a payment app. I think they don't go, they're not in the same folder on my phone. They're not in the same folder on my phone either. I kept oh, wondering, I was like, what is your apps? Yes. <laughs> It doesn't matter because I still went to the entertainment app to Venmo someone. <laughs> well, Venmo. <laughs> can be- okay. Speaking of entertainment, Clerks 3. So Clerks 3 is the third entry, possibly the final entry in the Clerks story that started all the way back in 1993. Is four. that one? The- four. Four and 94. Um, and it's from, which was Kevin Smith's first movie. And this is the third one. And, before before we get into talking about clerks 3 i just want to take a moment to reflect on like what does kevin smith this so this is almost 30 years after the original movie what is kevin smith's what 28 years what are, what do his movies or what does seeing clerks for the first time mean to you cuz because for me it's a story and i'll tell it over and over and over again it was an afternoon after school. I want to say I was hanging out possibly with like Alana and Naomi and Josh. And we went to the Blockbuster video. I think maybe even before it was Blockbuster video, I forget what it was called. But that video store that was underground where a million comics was on Queen Mary. Isn't that that mm-hmm. was Nickelodeon? No, no that wasn't Nickelodeon. Was eventually, eventually we can video Tron. Yeah, eventually we can video Tron, but it was before Blockbuster, mm-hmm. before, or maybe it was Blockbuster. The point is, I mean, by the way, when you can you believe that not only were there was there a video store, there were four on that street. On that street, yep, just I mean, on that street. It was the '90s, and so I remember. This is when, you know, we were just. I mean, you would pick something based on the box, and I saw this movie with this black and white cover and these kids looking like grungy and alternative slackers and it and it had all these you know four star reviews or something on the on the front and i said well let's rent this no idea what it was no algorithm uh, right there's no, no internet no rotten, no rotten tomatoes. tomatoes no yeah like instagram just really good cover art and we really and we put poster. and we put the movie on and you know it starts with the really strange scene with the with the cigarettes and the lungs and the, and the <laughs> gum and then pelting with cigarettes and what is this black and white movie? Nothing like, and then it turns pretty quickly. If I remember to the scene where they're talking about the death star and the contractors on the death star, which is referenced that's to early in the movie. Yeah. And but it's, that's a little, because that's by, by the time that's happening, Randall, it's Randall's one that's talking about it. But he doesn't show up until partway, until like a certain chunk into the movie because he's so late for work. Right, exactly. And and I remember it was like a, a world opening to me where I I said, I've never seen people talk like this ever <laughs> in a movie. I've never seen people talk like they weren't just talking like my friends about Star Wars. It was like this higher uh, level. Well, that's the thing. It's like super punched up dialogue of mm-hmm. what you would probably were talking about with your friends, but then elevated to the Kevin Smith version. 
mm-hmm. for a and, script. Like it's it's perfectly constructed. I've never heard anything like it, and I I mean I watched that movie over and over and over and over again soon, like, and like many people did. Mm-hmm. It was it, it became. It, I think I don't feel like it was. But maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like it was instant that it became so important. It's not like 20 years later it became important. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was like right it, away. It and was... people talk about singles and they talk about um, uh, reality bites. Reality bites, but I, I would say the, this to the, me is, diff- this is different. Is on a higher level of the 90s. Well, I, I watching it now in the context of now, the reason you can say it's on a higher level of the nineties is because it's very, it's a straight into, I want to, it's very authentic in that it feels very unfiltered that you, he wanted to make a movie about his life as a convenience store clerk. And that it just feels complete. A hundred percent. That's what it feels like. It feels like a guy made a movie who made a really great movie but it's, it's not someone telling somebody else's story, right? right. It, and it's telling his story in that time, using the people in his life that would, that, that as he, I think I read in an interview, him saying that um, the guy that plays Jay, right, is a friend of his from growing up. And he just wanted to see if other people would find him as funny as, as as funny as he found him, right? So it's really like unfiltered Kevin Smith's experience yeah, and view yeah. on the world. And I remember I once went into his comic shop in Red Bank, New Jersey, and like <laughs> the guy who plays the dude who who's looking at the eggs. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that's Walt Flanagan. Like he's just there working in the comic shop, right? <laughs> and and it it it. It it there was something and and I think it also was it foreshadowed geek culture becoming cool and mainstream, right? Those yeah. conversations about Star Trek and the contractors, whatever. There are mm-hmm. businesses, websites devoted to that type mm-hmm. of conversation. And also, it, it throughout the the series of the films, you know, but but all but really, especially that first one, it's not just they're talking about Star Wars, it's, it's everything around superheroes, right? Right. Talking about all the comic books and the superheroes um, in a way where, where it it is very important to them. They are having serious conversations about these yeah. things. It, and it's before, okay. it's before High Fidelity does it with music. High fidelity right. kind of does but, it with music. But, but that's even different because music is music. And he's talking about records. And, you know, that is revered. What Kevin Smith did was take something that you said that is just total nerd culture that is not, you know, it's brushed off and turn it into some of the most important life changing conversations, conversations among friends. That you can have. Yeah. R- right. Mall Rats um, comes next. And which, which, okay. Puts, so you asked me, okay. So you asked me what clerks means. Right. You asked us, what does clerk mean? Yeah. Clerk means. And so clerks mean, and I feel very spoiled. And I've said this many times on this podcast that you did the work for us because I remember seeing it. And, and I remember at first, not, you know, get like a first being like, wait, why? Like, isn't this the same thing as just sitting around with you and your friends and just sort of like, <laughs> why is, why did someone make a movie about this? Who is this guy? why is this in black and white? I just don't get it. And I think, I mean, I don't know. I like now in retrospect, it's, it's such an important movie. It's, it's, I don't know if he meant to do it. It's basically neorealism, which is like a, a movement in film. He's, you know, commenting on a lot of different things about society, a lot of socioeconomic things about society. And then I just thought it was really cool that somebody made this with their friends like that now you know 30 years later its importance has grown obviously immensely but then I was like oh this is really funny but he was to me the guy that did that before he did mall rats like mall rats then was everything about clerks but made for me people like that's true mall rats is like yeah 
a madcap teen comedy with made by the guy who made clerks and so it was sort of like the marrying of these two worlds like produced mall rats which to me is my one of my favorite movies of all time and my favorite kevin smith movie dogma be damned it is one of like mall rats to me is the best i and, love so that the, movie in the last two days three days the last three days i've watched clerks and then part two and three. And then when we finished three last night, I was so excited. I started Mall Rats. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just going to go through the whole, I'm going to go through the whole collection. Yeah, I'm going to go through the whole collection. That, yeah, it's, that it's first really... run of five movies is a pretty incredible run. That's Clerks, Mall Rats, Mall Chasing Rats, Amy, Chasing Dogma, Amy Dogma, Dogma, and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. I remember when Chasing Amy came out. That was a really big deal. I didn't like it as much as Mallrats, but I remember you and your friends. I remember you and Josh talking about it a lot. And people yeah, talking I mean, about over it. time, that's not, that's probably my least favorite of those five. It's more of a drama. Um, but a, a lot of people say it's, that, I think that one is, has a Criterion collection version. Like that's considered one, his best movie by critics, I think. So good for that. I mean, like, the, the, you know, not bad. I mean, like, it's it's really cool. All right, so Clerks 3, but I, I want to start with... Say, but but oh. I just want to say quickly, last thing on Clerks, it does hold up. I do recommend watching it. If you've never seen it before, you haven't seen it in a long time, I really do recommend going back and watching it because it it really does hold up and it's and it's such a wonderful little time, uh, time machine back into 1994 if you want to feel it and experience it the way that it was, you know? Um, and, uh, and it's, and it's still fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Now Beck, I want to start with you because you did watch all three movies. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. In, in a weekend. What was your reaction to Clerks three? Well, my reaction to Clerks three is that it is obviously much more of a drama than, than you would expect it to be given the, the genre of film that you think you're going into, but I thought it was so wonderful because the Clerks trilogy very much feels representative of Kevin Smith and where he was at each place in his life making them. Totally. You know, he wasn't trying. I think the fact that he would that he did not try to recreate the original is why it works so well. Because the '94 one, that's of his life in 1994, 2006 feels, you know, the second one feels pretty representative of the filmmaker and where he was at in life in 2006, if you look at his trajectory. And now the one that came out this year and he, and what he's been through in his life, having had a massive heart attack, having to make big changes to who he is, it, um, to, to how he lives and, and, and his relationships, um, this one is a more of a drama and it represents a, an adult man who's gone through some stuff in his life and is reconciling that. So yeah, I yeah, thought it was I, fantastic. Absolutely. I really, I loved, I loved that they went straight for him contemplating his mortality. And, and what I felt like what was even deeper than that is that I think the movie really reflects a man who has, you know, who did not live his life in a healthy way, nearly died, and is genuinely afraid of losing what he has. And mm -hmm. whereas, you know, the first one, it's a little bit like nihilistic, mm -hmm. slacker, on my way up, make something of yourself or don't kind of story. And 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 by the third one, in this third one, you're really looking at a guy who is imagining what it would be like it, 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 he he is not ready to check out the the, the author mm -hmm. you know the movie kind of takes a little bit of a different turn but he's not ready to check out he loves his wife so much and he loves his daughter so much he talks all the time in real life about how his daughter is his best friend and mm -hmm. i you know this is a movie made by somebody who wants to communicate how precious not just life, but the love in his life is. And again, this is the guy who chips, you know, how to take guy, care of your relationships. Right. And again, and this is the same guy who gave us the term jizz moppers in the first movie. <laughs> right. Um, and so I, I think, and, and I think in like 
there's the, so the the movie starts off with the, so the second movie ends with him falling in love and getting i think engaged to um Rosario Dawson's character and then the mm-hmm. third one starts with she's died maybe weeks later and right. it seems later. like I think it's months like, later because yeah, the ending soon of the first one the ending of the first one of the second one sorry the ending of the second one they reopen the quick stop and she's very very pregnant right and and so what's happened in the interim is this horrible tragedy where she died in an accident and i was worried at first there's this concept you know fridging of fridging someone where you you kill off a character in the in the opening scene um as, as a plot device or maybe because you can't get the actor back and i was like oh i guess Rosario Dawson yeah. who has been in oh, a lot of his movies right I guess she was busy being too busy <laughs> too busy doing star wars and and instead they bring her back a bunch in the movie as like yeah. a as like a vision or a ghost almost like a force ghost and and it, i thought it was beautiful i thought it was beautifully done and it was less about the continuity of the second movie and more about like becky said like a diary entry of a guy at this point in his life and um, imagining what would be in his life and, if it took a different course and just yeah just just for a second to speak on the people that he brought into the movie his daughter has a cameo a few times which is sweet and then um he's got amy sedaris operating on randall while talking about the mandalorian which was amazing which is and was of course she's in the mandalorian conversation. Um, such a funny conversation. the best is that she's in the mandalorian right and then you've got rand you know this is the way <laughs> all yeah. the like all the all the new Star Wars stuff, which there's so much of, has made it into his third movie. Like the the reason to keep making Star Wars, other than that, I guess there's a reason to keep making Clerks because there's just <laughs> more material to put into these movies, and it's done in such a funny, sweet way. Um, like when he's like, "I don't want to get sued by Disney" and all kinds of stuff. That it's you know, Rosario Dawson's really cool that she's in it. It's just chock full of, I think it's not just nostalgia though, right? Like the way it's done, it's brought into 2022, his shtick. It's, you know, and of course it's him, the story of him making clerks, which is, was made for $30,000. And when he shows the movie that Randall makes at the end, it is clerks, right? Yeah, that was was very meta choice is that, so so the, the movie goes in the direction of Randall has a heart attack and then decides to make a movie. And then that movie ends up being, it's like this, it's almost like a midrash. It's like a retelling of, mm-hmm. of the story of making the movie, but as if he made the movie, like, why would he make the movie now? But it was, mm-hmm. it was a retelling of him making the movie and th- they recreate a lot of the scenes, but there's exactly. also some beautiful resolution. Like the Veronica character, who is the girlfriend from the first movie who movie. gets jilted mm-hmm. unfairly like they they bring her back in a really sweet and funny way i thought that was really nice it was really um really i agree well and i also love the ben affleck cameo like, i mean yeah. he's not too big to come and do clerks three that's uh you know it's surprising and it was awesome that he came and did did his cameo yeah so, the ben um, affleck relationship i think is is a really nice thing about about is a really nice thing between these two because ben affleck well, and, was and not he, super famous when he was in mall rats no no he or, had really been or chasing anything. amy and, and jersey girl maybe i don't like maybe he's then famous he by then i guess but or dogma isn't he in dogma too yeah, yeah he is yeah i guess he's in a lot of he's, he's in the and jane silent bob Strike back. I think he's in all of them. Um, Yeah, I think he's in all of them. But, but I will, I, I will say, side note, it took me decades to view, and even now it's still hard. I will, uh, part of me will always see Ben Affleck as the guy from from Mallrats, as 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 the the a hole from 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 Mallrats. I will. It just part of me is always going to see him as the as it's the story he works at, like men's fashion or something. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he's always going to like see. He plays a really good asshole. I think that's like I'm sorry for him, but he's a great actor and he plays a really good asshole. 
but but the you know i i want to say i i really liked the movie i liked it and at first i was kind of annoyed because i was like why do we need why is there another one of these it's so self-indulgent and it's like or it's just for the fans so it's the opposite of self-indulgent it's selfless but unnecessary and he did such a good job with it it was a pleasure to watch it and the jokes were funny they were fresh you know all like he he didn't just recycle old jokes he brought them into this decade and the, the shtick of uh of uh, is it elias is that the the other worker there elias, yeah. Yeah. going going goth, goth. And, then he well, and, and his continuous comment on religion like his continuous comment on religion right. and since his the movies, earliest days of yeah, the, his is, movies yeah. is amazing um, dogma he, he's always struggled with it yeah and i think that that's super cool and it was a little sadder than i would have expected yeah it was it was, it was kind of a hard I, like but yeah but, it's, but i'm saying I, I think but it works because it doesn't feel like it's sad for sadness's sake it feels like this guy is putting on the page what he has gone through in his life it's a like clerk's very much feels like his therapy when you watch it and and so i'm okay with it being sad i'm okay with it having its emotional moments because it really does feel like his voice and i don't know so it works i thought it was great yeah i think i think it was really a loving movie um i want to just shout out because some of the actors that are in it are not are not the actors that became right there ben affleck has been in his movies but the actors yeah. from Clerks didn't necessarily become the most famous actors. Brian O'Halloran, Jeff Anderson, Trevor Randall. Furman, who plays Elias, and um, uh, Marilyn uh, Gigliotti, w- or who plays Veronica. I think they were just lovely and so good in this movie. And and Brian O'Halloran and Jeff Anderson were asked to do a lot in this movie in terms of acting. Yeah. This was yeah, not yeah. they definitely with... over the course of the three have really leveled up. Yeah. And good mm-hmm. good for them because this was like this had this works because they have to sell it and good for them. Um and then I really loved um Austin Sajur, who played blockchain, which was the sort of <laughs> the new other silent bomb. The oh my silent bomb. shy. How much did you love all of the criticism of crypto and NFTs? It was, the crypto like right stuff out was of really the funny. Right but then at the end, it left me being like, wait a minute, but the should, kites, should, wait, should should buy some kites did okay. buy. So. so all in all, I think it's a buy all around for us. This is really, this yeah. is a really, this is a really special movie, for, especially if you, if you've seen the other movies, but I recommend watch all three. They're very, very funny. They're, and, and like Becky said, they're diary, you know, they're these like snapshots of this guy at different points in his life. Um, and I'm really, you know, and it was very cute that he had Ming Chen in it. Oh yeah. And sorry, got to shout out Ming Chen. Chen. Yeah. He was one of the hockey players at the beginning. Ming Chen, one of the great podcasters on the planet and a friend of the show. He's been on the show. Yeah. And a a good friend of Kevin Smith. The hockey scene. Um, All right. I want to play a quick Byron meh. Okay. Because this movie, so this is a meta movie where they remake a movie. Right where they're right. making a movie while you're watching a movie, and I and I realized, I, I was like, well, what movies have people making movies in? And there's a lot of movies where people are making movies in them. So I have two quick buy rent meds. One is I'm going to talk this the meta movie making a movie genre that I would call this, and this would be, um, I'm actually going to change one of these. Okay, um, to I'm going to change one of these. So on my list here, so just. Go with me here. So one of them is Scream 3, because in Scream 3, a big right. portion of Scream 3 <laughs> takes place in Hollywood on the set of them making Stab 2. And there's all these jokes <laughs> about like Wes Craven being like a hack and making another sequel. And they, they play off the whole that that element. And, and then the next movie I want to do um, is a movie I have not seen, but I know that it takes a similar approach, which is, I think they were actually making fun of this in Scream 3, which is um, the Blair Witch Book of Shadows, which is the second Blair Witch movie, (laughs) where it's like about them making a Blair Witch movie. Oh, I didn't even know there was another Blair Witch movie. Well, that makes it fun when you play Byron Man with something you've never seen. Mm. And then the last one I want to do is a movie... I was afraid to write this into the notes. Like I got like anxious leaving this in the notes because I was afraid it was going to come and get me. Really? And that is Wes Craven's new nightmare. And that is the nightmare on Elm street part seven that takes place in 
the real world where um part seven uh Jesus. where the freddy krueger like monster comes out and attacks the actual actors <laughs> so oh they're make it's okay they're making the freddy krueger movie and right, he, so the Freddy Krueger movie has been made. What makes takes, you think I've seen any of these? Any of no, these. I didn't. You don't have to see any of these movies for us to play by Red Man. What has that been? I actually did three. see Scream three. three. I did yeah. see Scream three, and I remember it being the least scary of the Scream movies. It has so a Jay and Silent Bob cameo in it. Right, so I guess I'll <laughs> buy that one, and I'm maying the other two because I'm just not watching extracurricular scary movies for no reason. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> All right, Lily. What about you? I'll buy Scream 3. I will rent New Nightmare because it's a great concept for a movie. And I'm going to meh Blair Witch. I didn't even know existed. The I'm, I'm with Lily on I that. I did see I... the first Blair Witch in the theater at Cavendish Mall. Uh, still in haven't seen the whole thing. <laughs> Can't. It's cool. Doesn't it take place in Maryland, like near where I live? You didn't live there at the time. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> The wet, um, the West Craven's New Nightmare one. I liked it. I, that would be my rent too. When I saw the commercial for that for the first time, I loved the concept. Like it scared right. the life out of me. I love the concept. Still not going to see it. Can't. Hilarious. Too. Just All right. Now let's buy rent, rent man some comedies about making movies because then I had so much fun. Like and then this like category. This movie. This is whereas the last one was like three movies. You're like I don't care about these. Bowfinger, which is go back and watch that. Steve Martin. Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy, Christine Mr. Baranski, Graham. Heather Graham. Just That's a cool brilliant movie. movie. Yeah. Um, Bowfinger, Frank Oz, I believe, directed it. Okay. The State in Maine, Mammoth, right? We're talking about a Mammoth take on making movies. Mm-hmm. And it's Get also a great Shorty. Movie, which is the best movie ever. So you have to go with Get Shorty there. Yeah, Get about Shorty making a movie. is pretty... Is, I mean, it's yeah. To me personally, I'd be curious how I'd be curious to watch these three to see how they hold up against each other now. Because at the time, Get Shorty was it's pretty. I mean, it was the Cadillac of movies. You know, yeah. yeah. These are three movies I could watch. I could watch. I love any, State in Maine too, though. Any minute, it's any time. Fantastic movie. But I'm if I'm buy forced, all of them. if I'm forced, the one I've seen the most times is Bowfinger. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Bowfinger, I've seen the most. Well, these are, these. Are, I feel like people haven't talked about these movies in a while. So I hope if people who haven't seen them are listening. Yeah, those are three. You know that none of them are really mez, but no, you know, no, no, they're all buys. These are, yeah, these are all like huge winners. All three of these are must sees. For people who want, like, I the, the movies about making movies or Hollywood movie making about Hollywood movie is lost a lot of its luster but these three are huge you know who's making a new movie about making movies in hollywood is damien which is shazil shazil i don't know how to pronounce shazil um the one who made whiplash and um the guy who made whiplash and um la la land Land. Hmm. with margot robbie is making like a movie cool. about making movies in Hollywood. I'm sure it's going to be amazing because he's amazing, that director. So. Irma Vap is a show about making a show. Yes. We talked about it last week. And Just Reboot saying. is pretty good too. The first couple episodes of Reboot have been really a good. show about a show. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a movie, is there a movie, this is my final question for today. Is there a movie that you would want to see a movie made about it being made the way Clerks 3 was sort of like a retelling? like? I That's would like to question. see a movie made about the making of cats, the movie. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but that's not a documentary behind the scenes. Not scene. a documentary, like a, a dramatization. Like a fictionalized, a dra- where a they're fictionalized. like, someone is herding the cats to go do their musical <laughs> numbers. They're yeah, not real like, cats. Like just about the decision. No, if no, because if it was a movie about making the movie, then they would be real cats. If it was a documentary behind the scenes, then it would be human actors playing cats. Do you no, no, but Lily? it's not a documentary. It's like but the I'm disaster it's artist, a, but it's about right. In which case, the world of cats would be real, 
and then oh. they would have to be treated as real cats. So it's just like someone like talking to like a little black and white cat calling a monkey strap. No, like still these humans playing cats, but they have to be in character as cats oh, the okay. whole time. Right. So you they have to be I'm in saying? the suits. Yeah. It would be really cool. In that's the my suits pitch. as actual cats. I think you won the pitch. You see what I'm saying? I think that's my pitch. All right. Um, what are your shout outs or recs this week and where people can follow you? Um, oh, I, I forgot. I also started watching season two of Avenue five. Oh, that's a it, space no movie. One, I think like, except for me well, watches it's on I, HBO. I, I, it's I with started Hugh the Laurie, first season. Josh Gad, um, I've, I've heard very good the things first about it. It was, it was a it's, bit stressful. I think it's really, really funny. It's just, I get very stressed watching it's a bit it. Stressful. The concept yeah. is that, is that they're, they're, they're on a Boss. space cruise that goes off course and they're going to be off course in space for like years and years and years and um they're stuck just disaster after disaster and so it's like very on the one hand it kind of makes me a bit anxious because you know yes. space cruises that get lost but on the other hand everyone on the show is extremely funny the cast so is i like it season two just started that's what i'm watching because i've mostly been watching clerks movies the last week and where can people follow you back uh, Oh, at Paper BK Princess on Twitter. That's it. That's all. That's everything. Well, Someone else go. Okay. Um, I finished Bad Sisters on Apple Plus. I really liked it. I love Sharon Hogan. So Horgan. Just kidding. Not Hogan. Horgan. I think she's awesome. If you haven't seen Catastrophe, which is amazing, I say watch that, then watch Bad Sisters. Um, and then we started watching, of course, like whatever new is scary on Netflix. I have to see the watcher with Bobby Cavanaugh. Lee and, oh my God. Um, I told Naomi you that Watts. that's based on a real, it is on based real on a real story, story that I read an article about and could not sleep. Okay. Like I read so, an article about that real story and I was up for hours. It's scared. It's, it's a it, real story. It terrified me. It really, it's, it seems so it upsetting. Is, I'm not watching it. It's a real story. And then they embellish it with like other real stories that happen in that neighborhood. Not necessarily in that. They pretend in the show that it happened in the house, but these other things didn't happen in the house. Enough they just happened in the same just neighborhood. That one house. I'm sorry. And no. the, the stuff that happened in the neighborhood is insane. Anyways, we watched two episodes. Um, I think my husband is going to force me to watch the rest of it because I like literally bowed out in episode two and went to sleep. <laughs> but um, if you like scary stuff, it's it's pretty good so far. And you can follow me, Chichi K. Gomez, on Twitter. And my recommendation, I just want to, I want to shout out to a podcast. There's a podcast called Podcast X. It has Ben <laughs> Kendrick, Rob Keys, and Kofi Outlaw. And it is a phenomenal, you know, focus on a lot of the superhero movies and nerd culture comic books um but it's at a heart it's a great movie podcast but what's really important about podcast x is that these three guys were the original screen rant underground podcast host right, and right. they reunited cool, to cool. do this show and i can't i can't under i can't understate i can't overstate sorry i can't overstate the influence that these folks had. I I remember the day I was out for a walk when my newborn kid was being babysat and I popped on a podcast about the new Avengers movie that had just came out and it was Screen Rant. And great. I, I, you know, that, I mean, they're among the inspirations for why we're podcasting. For, yeah. And it's sure. great to, the three of them are so smart. And it's just great to hear their three voices back again talking about movies. And so Ben, Rob, and Kofi, who I do not know personally, just please keep making podcasts. Everyone should check out Podcast X. These are some of the smartest guys talking about movies, and they love movies. And they're one of the inspirations for this podcast. And so... Nice. um and then the other one is, of course, the Tony Kornheiser Show podcast, which I've been listening to, which recently had show, a, a, a great song from the great Dan Byrne. It had a it had a it had a great song <laughs> from, from Dan Byrne about this French basketball player. I have to pronounce the name. Um, uh, hold on. I want to pronounce it right. Um, I, I have to. Oh, yeah. 
Victor Wenbanyama. It has great. It's from I think this week. It's like Monday or something like that. This week, uh, Victor Wenbanyama. Uh, Dan Byrne has just a hilarious song about his about um, uh, about this character, and just a really great reference to the French Foreign Legion. And with that. <laughs> My uh, handle is at pancake and the number four table. You can follow all the Friday Night Movie shenanigans at Friday Night Movie, Movie on Twitter and Instagram. The theme music is by What Does It Eat? Lily and Becky. It's so great to be back with you. Bye. Love, Love you. you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye.